all God's people said, amen. You may be seated. What a walk down memory lane that was. Hey, man, today is celebration day at First Bible. And we're here to celebrate today and to give praise and thanksgiving for all God has done over the last 10 years at First Bible in and through our lead pastor, Mark Brown. Yesterday at Mighty Mites Baseball, the focus of the Bible lesson at the sports park was the word commitment. The <clears throat> verse that was used was Luke 9.23, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. Um, I just want you to know that Mark Brown is committed. You know, that verse applies to everybody in this room. If any of us want to follow after Christ, we need to take up our cross daily and follow him. I do, you do. And today we honor the fact that that's been a desire of his life. Mark Brown has been committed. He's committed to serve God. He's committed to teach God's word. He's committed to be a servant of God. He's committed to do God's will and God's pleasure and that phrase comes from Philippians 2.13, his life verse, a verse that he tries to follow by, and, and that has been 
the desire of his heart. And let me um, give you a brief biographical sketch of his time here for many of you don't go back far enough to know that back in the 90s it all began when our founding pastor Rick Johnson and Brownie became good friends over the course of several years. They had conversations about Brownie possibly moving to Blue Springs someday and Pastor Rick formally asked him if he would consider moving here in the year 1997. So in that year, God really got a hold of his heart and he prayed the next year about moving to Blue Springs. And through a lot of divine circumstances, God made it clear in 1998 that he wanted the Browns in Blue Springs at First Bible. Brownie preached the Valentine's annual banquet that year. Some of you were there, I was there uh, in February of 1998. And he moved to Blue Springs in July of that year. Kind of July is going to come up a couple of times here. It's kind of a <clears throat> big month. He moved here in July of that year, and Cheryl and the girls followed uh, within the month. When he came here, he came here as a layman. His church was only one year old, less than one year old. And uh, he got a job at Cotman Transmission in July of that year and worked there until... He came full-time on staff in January 1st of 2002. He was ordained to the ministry on May 5th of 2002. Brownie started to work in the youth department, first as a layman, and then when he came on staff, he started working in the youth department in July, July of 1999. He led the youth group as youth pastor for the next 11 years until 2010. He was also the overseer for the children's ministries and the sports park during that time. After that, Brownie started a young adult ministry called Awaken in the fall of 2010, and he led that ministry for approximately the next 12 years. He was also in charge of adult fellowships, discipleship, men and women ministries, and ADP sports park. He became our interim pastor in February of 2012 and was named the lead pastor, here we go, July 1st, 2012, which makes July 2022 his 10th year as our lead pastor. Wow. ADP Sports Park was dedicated in the year 2004. And I just want you to know in some ways, I feel like Brownie can be called the father of the sports park. It was his planning, it was his vision, it was his hours upon hours and years upon years of hard work that has brought about the leagues, the teams, the ministries of the sports park. And only eternity will reveal the spiritual investment that has been made at that park. Brownie has been a part of all this church has done for the last 24 years. We've been together a long time, buddy. Yep. Today we celebrate his 10th anniversary of his service to God as our lead pastor. And it's to God that we give all the glory. We were looking for somebody to give a testimony and we thought the best way to have a testimony was to reach all the way back to somebody that was in his youth department from the beginning and have somebody from the youth department come up and, and give a testimony about our pastor, Mark Brown. And so I've asked Lana if she'll come and give us a testimony and after that we're gonna have a uh, video presentation. Lana. I was a little quicker on the jaw that time. <laughs> Thank you for moving, Cheryl. <laughs> in first service, they ganged up on me. I was like, I'm not going to cry. I'm going to do this. And Brownie was here, and Cheryl was here, and had nowhere to look. I was like, dead middle, center of the aisle. That was the only safe place. And now my parents show up with my brother, and I'm like, still no safe place to look. So I'll try to get through it without any tears. 
Um, I was truly honored when Doc asked me to um, just kind of represent the youth ministry. I was in sixth grade when Brownie and Cheryl first came here, and I remember his first shirt that he wore. Yeah, you thought I was going to say the same thing. I changed it. Surprise. Yeah, I didn't say this in the first service, but I remember the shirt he wore that very first Sunday when he came to the youth ministry. And I was new to the youth. I was probably 11 years old at the time. And he had this, like, tannish, brownish shirt. And I thought, oh, his name's Mark Brown Brownie. That's cool. And from then on, I, to this day, forget his first name is Mark because um, he will only ever be Brownie to me. Um, but I, I just thought a lot about from that you know, 11 years old onward, there's not a single major event or life decision I can remember, honestly, that Brownie wasn't a part of. Um, I was single for about uh, 12 years, and every major decision I had to make, I would call my dad and I would call Brownie. And he always answered the phone. Amazing. Um, there, there are days I know he pulled over to answer the phone from the road, and I could not have been more loved. So the last song we sang was just over and over and over, just telling the Lord how good he's been. And as I thought about Brownie and Cheryl, I thought, wow, that is just the goodness of God in my life. And I I think I can safely speak for the rest of the youth um, and all the young adults um, that have grown up under his mentorship. um, Because Brownie is a father. He's a spiritual father. He's he's a father of um, three amazing girls. And... In some way, he did this thing where he loved us so deeply, and he could say the most painful thing to your face, and you would think, this guy loves me, you know? Uh, Because he's kind, and he's friendly, and he's warm, and at the same time, he wants the, the very, very best for you, and sometimes you are doing exactly the opposite of what God would have you to do. And he has always been courageous in that way to challenge and to push a little. And he always seems to know, right, the moment to push. I don't think it's the moment to push, but he gets it right. So um, just a a short little poll I took this week. Uh, Stacy was one of them. But um, I just asked several people who have known Brownie a long time, and some people have known him a little bit shorter. And I was amazed. I said, would you please just tell me in three words, how would you describe Brownie? And At first, I was getting confused on the text messages, who said what, because it wasn't maybe the fourth or fifth person. They almost all gave me the exact same three words or synonyms of those same words in almost the exact same order. And I thought, wow, what a profound testimony of who this man is and how he reflects the character of God, because these were the three things almost always in this order. Um, Everyone came back and said, Brownie is passionate. He is all in. Brownie is dedicated and faithful. And Brownie is loving. He has the biggest heart. And my favorite picture up on the slides, I see it every once in a while, is that one where he's just kind of leaning on the fence. He's got his shades on. And he's just kind of watching what's going on. And um, to me, that's Brownie. Because he has a soberness about him. He's very serious. He's very prayerful. And he's always just kind of watching But at the same time, he's not just watching an event taking place or stuff going on or, um, you know, programs. He's watching people. And if there's one thing I've learned from this man, it's that people are incredibly valuable. And I've watched him sacrifice in big and small ways day after day after day over the last 24 years because he loves people more than anything. And... There we go. See, and I'm intentionally not looking at you and not looking at you. Um, He values people in such a way, whether you've met him for two Sundays, you were a visitor or at a wedding or a funeral, or you've known him for decades at a time and just run into him occasionally. I think you would all agree Brownie makes you feel very valuable. And whether you've talked to him every week for the past 10 years or you haven't seen him in 10 years, he he treats you as though you were the only person in the room and you have made his day by showing up and being in his his presence. So um, the verse that came to my mind was 1 Corinthians 11, 1. It says, be ye followers of me, even as also I am of Christ. 
And I can say personally, but I think also for all of the youth that have come through his ministry, that we learned pretty quickly it was safe to follow Brownie because he was following Jesus. And there were times I'd call him up or have this big major question, you know, in my mind or just really struggling to be a Christian in this crazy world we live in. And every time Brownie would say, Lena, just follow Jesus. And sometimes I would be crying like I am now and I think that's really hard. But I would watch him do it. And I saw Cheryl do it and so many other adults in this room. And I thought, okay, I'm going to do what they're doing because their life is fruitful and courageous, passionate, dedicated, and loving. And you've taught us so much about what it is to follow Christ. And I think I speak for everyone when I say thank you. I don't know who or where I would be if I didn't have you in my life. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Good morning, First Bible Baptist Church, Blue Springs, Missouri. This is Mike Matovich from Paradise Church here in Las Vegas. Just wanting to wish our good friend, my good friend, Mark Brown, a very happy 10th anniversary as the senior pastor of your church. Mark has been a friend for all these years, actually beyond that. Uh, we traveled together to Zambia back in 2006 and had an amazing, amazing time there. And while we ministered to those folks there, the kids, the Vacation Bible School, it was just a super great blessing and opportunity to get to know him and your people even much better. I'm honored to be a friend of his, and he's a friend of mine. I pray for him all the time. He prays for me. Uh, we've worked together. Uh, we've been there before at uh, First Bible. I've spoken at your church and had a great honor there to do that. It's humbling to be able to come back to such a strong, powerful church and one that loves the Word of God. I am so thankful that you have a man who's faithful ministering to you and laboring in the Word. You. You don't know what kind of a blessing you have to have a man like that on your team. So God bless you. May God give you many more years until he blows the horn and takes us out of here. And even as the Bible says, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. And I want to encourage you, Mark, to continue to stay by the stuff, be faithful, and keep that book as the final authority for faith and practice in your life and in the life of the ministry there. God bless you till we see you again. Mark, on your 10th anniversary, as a senior pastor of First Bible Baptist Church in Blue Springs, Missouri, I just want to say three things. First, I want to celebrate your uh, professional mechanic ability that first brought you out to Kansas City. In Rochester, you were a first class technician, mechanic, front end manager, etc. So, first, you were a first class mechanic. Second, I have to suggest that perhaps you were first class maintenance manager as well. As far as I remember, much of the athletic fields at the church in Kansas City and Blue Springs are a product of your vision, your relentless work, and your meticulous detail. And uh, thirdly, I certainly don't want to avoid the fact that you were an amazing minister. You've gone through the ranks at the church and you find yourself as the head pastor and those of us that know you uh, know that a manager does not describe you. You are a true minister of God from the heart and here in Buffalo in Lancaster, New York at First Bible Baptist Church, we certainly want to say our congratulations to you, your family, and your church family. God bless you on your 10th anniversary at First Bible Baptist Church of Blue Springs. Hey, Brownie, congratulations, 10 years. I can't believe it. Bro, lead pastor, First Bible Baptist Church. Uh, as I think back about our relationship, uh, I think back of uh, some of our early time in Zambia 
and me just getting to be a part of watching you lead and direct and God use you in great ways and uh, just seeing you now lead the church there in Blue Springs, man, it's a, it's a blessing and uh, it's a joy for me to see God work in through in you and through you. And, and I got to admit, man, I know that you've been through some really hard things. And I know that God has used you to move mountains and, and uh, really just impact people's lives. And I love that. My biggest regret is probably I just don't get to spend a whole lot of time with you. And I wish we could see each other a little bit more. It'd be helpful if you actually answered your text messages or phone calls when, when you know, that thing rings. But I love you, bro. Congratulations on 10 years. And, uh, man, I think God's pleased with what you're doing. And I think the kingdom of God is uh, better because of you. And that church is better because of you. Keep going. Um, you are a faithful servant. I love you, man. God bless. Brownie, it's been 10 years. Congratulations. Oh, what an awesome, awesome job you've done. You've been a part of my life. Your, your fingerprints are in my ministry life. Uh, ever since I've been doing ministry, you've taught me how to love Jesus better. You've taught me how to love people better and how to love the Word of God better. I'm so thankful you're in my life. Know that uh, we're praying for you. Looking forward to seeing you. Love you, brother. You are an all-star. Hey, Mark. Hey, Cheryl. We want to congratulate y'all for 10 years as lead pastors at FBBC in Blue Springs. Man, what an awesome milestone and accomplishment that is. Man, I hope that um, y'all feel honored and feel celebrated and loved by many. Um, Brother Mark, my friend, uh, you have been such an awesome friend. Thank you. I feel honored and I feel so blessed by having you as one of my friends, my closest friends. Um, you have been such a blessing. You hope, have always been there for us when uh, every time in the good and in the bad, you always uh, have shown yourself to be a true friend. We thank you so much and we honor you today for 10 years of ministry. I hope you party big today, party big with the church, party big with the family, um, feel celebrated. God loves you. We love you guys. And I can't wait to spend some time and maybe eat some barbecue. Come on. Uh, we can do barbecue here in Texas or we can do it in, in Kansas City. I don't mind. Whatever it is, uh, I don't care. Whatever. We'll eat some barbecue sometime. Enjoy uh, your friendship and uh, uh, a little talk, you know, whenever. We love you all. Uh, know that. From the bottom of our hearts um i hope your your day is amazing celebrate big and again we can't wait to see what the lord has in store for the next 10 years whatever he does whatever he has we celebrate that too love you guys bye-bye well mark brown you have been you've been in kansas city a long long time for sure but this is your 10th anniversary as pastor and pastor george grace wants to wish you congratulations and many, many more years. In my mind, I go back to a Bible study at 40 Overlook Trail, where I lived in 1983. And I remember Mark Brown and some of the other ball players from the Red Wings coming to my house for a Bible study with Pastor Metzger, who led all those Bible studies. And I remember it was a hot, I think it was a hot June day. And I remember, I've told this story before, but there's people out there who have never heard it and they need to hear it. We sat there and it was a exciting, an exciting Bible study that day, I remember. But when the Bible study was over and we had had our snacks and all that and everybody was going home, Mark, I don't know if you remember this, but your shorts stuck to my chair in the kitchen. And you left an imprint of your derriere, that's a polite way of saying it, in that chair, and I want you to know this, although the f kitchen furniture back then is all gone, I kept that chair, and I have the impression of your derriere, which, by the way, was much smaller than it is now, I'm sure. But I want to wish you, <laughs> I want to wish you a happy anniversary, Mark. God bless you. I'll see you, by the way, this fall in Kansas City. Bye now. My friend, Mark Brown, better known, a.k.a. as Brownie. Just want you to know I love you, and I'm so proud of you 
happy anniversary, 10 years of being the pastor. I can remember when you were in a ballpark in the back where uh, the landscape guys were and we were talking and you were sharing your life story with me and then you came to know Christ as Savior and to watch you grow and mature in the Lord and then see you discipling people and being close to myself and all the rest of the ball players, uh, it is truly a blessing to have been a part of that. And then coming there and preaching times for, with the youth and stuff like that, I really appreciate that. But being a pastor, you know, I heard that when you get old, they put you out to pastor. And I pretty know that that's happening to you right now. So I love you. I love Cheryl. And I uh, love your family. You know that. And you'll always be special and precious to me. Thanks, buddy. Happy anniversary. Wow, that was a fantastic tribute. Wow. That was good. In case you're wondering why I'm up here, I represent the board of directors of First Bible. Um, the vice president of the board is Mark Snow, and he really should be doing this job, but he couldn't be here to this morning, and somehow the rest of the guys all pointed at me. And so here I am. So on the board of directors is Mark Snow as the vice president, Terry Sanchez, Rick Adams, uh, Mike Meyer, and now Roger Zink, now replacing Dave Gonzalez as his term just expired, and uh, myself. And so, um, first of all, I want to call Brownie and Cheryl on up to the platform, if you would, please. You may be seated at that. By the way, I just want you to know that on Wednesday is his birthday. Uh, July. <laughs> and on Friday, the 15th, is his spiritual birthday. July. Uh, he got saved 1983, July the 15th. So... And then this celebration, that's, that's, that's a lot of cake, brother. That's, yeah, so, or barbecue, I don't know which. Yeah, so, it's good. So, ladies first, right? Standing with our pastor and supporting him and praying for him and being in his ministry partner is Cheryl. I just want you to know, I don't know if you've been... Not all pastors' wives buy into their husbands' ministries. And some pastors' wives even make it difficult on her husband. You know, I believe that a husband and wife get called to the ministry, and they're a ministry team. And that's what we have standing here. And I want to thank Cheryl so much for all that she does. And I just want her to know that this celebration includes her as well. And we have a little special presentation for her. Put them on the table. <laughs> it's always good to, you know, stop and smell the roses. In the decades that I did inpatient hospital care, I would make hospital rounds and I would walk into a patient's room and oftentimes there were floral arrangements there and if ever I saw a rose in a floral arrangement, I would stop and smell the rose. And It's always good to just take that pause in life, isn't it? And realize God's goodness. If 
By the way, that's something men can't make, isn't that awesome? That's, that's a God thing right there, right? That's right. Anyway, so Cheryl, bless you, and, and now Brownie, on behalf of the board of directors, uh, first of all, we've granted uh, Pastor Brown a Sabbath rest of four weeks, uh, time off to rest, to refuel, to get away, to know God and to know his word more deeply and intimately, and then to return to this church more energized to take us in this ministry forward in the years that God has for us ahead. You know, and out in the world, and you all know what I'm talking about, you're all working, there's all of us, right? And then there's a group of people that take off every chance they can, they take every vacation day, and every personal day, and every sick day, and anybody they can talk into working for them a day. And then there's all of us who just do our job. And then there's a few people out there that after working years and years and decades, they've accumulated all these unused vacation days, never take personal days, never use their sick days, they just work and they work and they work and they do their job and they love their job. I just, most of you don't know this, but that's this guy right here. And he has been a faithful, committed minister. And so I just wanted to present him with a gift. I had to look hard to find a brown envelope. <laughs> so I did put brownie on this one and um, Brownie, I just want to say uh, thank you, and we presented him with some monies from the board, and on behalf of all of you for his time away to buy gasoline, <laughs> <laughs> and a good vacation, time to get away, to refresh for the two of them to travel and grant them their Sabbath rest. So. He has a much-deserved vacation and time off, and we just want to say thank you. Let's give him a hand. I just want to say thank you for loving us, uh, supporting us. Um, I didn't say it in the first service, but I'm very thankful for this man. He, no matter what, always, always follows the Lord first. Even in some of my darkest times when I've told him that I can't hear God, I don't want to talk to God, and I can't see God, he would gently kiss me on the cheek and tell me, I'll see you later at church. In a good way, because that told me that... I wasn't leaving her. He wasn't leaving me. <laughs> well, We're still together. It encouraged me to know that it's okay sometimes to be in the valley, that God's going to bring you back up to the hill, up to the top. And um, I can tell you as his wife and the mother of his children that he does put the Lord first before anything else in his life. And when I was young and didn't know any better in the Lord and the Word... I didn't like that very much, but there's nothing more I like now than him putting God before all of us, because I know that that's what he's supposed to do, that's what I'm supposed to do, and that's what you all are supposed to do. And I'm just thankful that you guys have loved us and supported us in some of our best times and in our darkest time. And you're our family here, and this is my home, and this is where I will always be, serving you guys no matter what. And remember, he is six years older than me, so I probably will live a lot longer than he will. <laughs> also 13 inches shorter than me. <laughs> Thank you, my beautiful wife. We got married in October. That messes up the July thing. And we had all the, all the, all, and the kids are June. 
thank you so much. All of you that have turned out to be here and uh, uh, this is, uh, we have a great church because of the Lord Jesus Christ and because of you. Because you make it so fulfilling and so fruitful to serve the Lord and, and I thank you for that. I thank the Lord, of course, so very much for my wife. She has bought in. I've had to threaten her a lot. But I'd write her some Old Testament passages. And <laughs> she keeps on coming back to the new covenant and Jesus and grace. Okay, okay. But I thank the Lord for men and women like Doc and Bobby Clem over all these years, 24 years, to come out to Blue Springs and make this family, Ray and Tam, have you known each other forever and ever? Michael, so glad you could come today. So many of the young men and women that are now getting a little bit older from youth ministry in the beginning years, I shared with a couple of people this week, it hit me in Oaxaca, uh, that this Sunday is 23 years ago, this Sunday, that God allowed me to start doing youth ministry. And there was a girl named Jennifer Crocker in that group. Remember Carol? Oh my goodness. All these years ago, and all the young men and women that started out hanging out, and we just said, okay, we're gonna do this in the Lord. And here we are, all these years later, and as I've said in the past, we're going to get around the things of Jesus Christ. We're going to get around the things of the Lord. We're going to get around the Word of God and let Him have the way that He deserves, have the glory He deserves. And so, thank you for allowing me to serve, allowing us to serve together. I'm so thankful for my three children. And I've mentioned before, they survived their only youth pastor. I ran away when Christine became a senior. She still has never forgiven me for that. Hi, Christine. What are you doing up there? I thought usually you're not here in second service. Ah, no. And there was a transition in things in 2010, but I'm very thankful for the privilege and honor of having the children that we have had together and now a couple of grandchildren, but you are our family from the moment that we moved here. Our physical family uh, is all the way everywhere, but in the spirit of God and the blood of Jesus Christ, we're family together. And uh, thank you, God. Just hanging out with you, Drew, for a couple minutes just today, and then your son, it just reminds me. I remember meeting you and your brother and sister in Rick Johnson's house 35 years ago. And here we are just continuing to serve the Lord together. So thank you for a very, very special day and for all the special days together. Thank you for ministering in the word. And as I shared last week in the preaching message we had in 1 Corinthians 2, it still remains that I have not seen nor ear heard nor entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. I figured out something very simple that took me years. That if I would just love him, that we would just love him the way he deserves to be loved and capture the love that he has for us to love others and love with his love. He will show us things. <laughs> he will show us things that we could never have dreamed. I'm a fulfilled man of the Lord. And I'm thankful, and if this was it, that would be great. But it's not it yet. We still have some work to do in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's finish the work that God's called us to do. I love you all. Thank you so much for a beautiful day. You can't say any more. You always want to have the last word, don't you? Thank you, Becky Bonner, for sharing your testimony of Chrissy and leading me to Christ. And thank you both for telling my mom the story of Jesus. And when she called me 
she was as a little child, and she said, guess what? Bobby led me, told me about Jesus. I'm going to go to heaven. Thank you. I don't know where I'd be without you in my life. Cheryl made me cry. Wow. Mark, did that ever happen in your house? Amen. Just kidding. Just kidding. Amen. Good morning. What a celebration already. A celebration of life. Celebration of the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, yeah, but we've been honoring Mark. Let me tell you something. Mark's only here because of Jesus Christ. And what he did in his life. Man, I, I've known this couple for 40 years. I can... Cheryl grabbed me the first service and she, she whispered in my ear. I don't know if I ought to say this, but I will. Your wife scared the hell out of me. <laughs> Those of you that don't know, Cheryl was 13 when she used to babysit our children. And so my wife would spend time with Cheryl and share Christ with her. And so... It was really cool, and I'll never forget the, the night Brownie got saved and told me the next night in the bullpen. He waited 24 hours and for whatever, but uh, man, I've known this man, this woman, this family, their daughters all these years, and I count it such a privilege. You know, I've only had, we have only had two pastors in our lifetime, you know, and all the times we've moved, we had Pastor George Grace and I remember that Bible study, and uh, anyway, but I don't remember what happened, but anyway, I do remember that study, but uh, George is funny, but George was my pastor at First Bible, and, and discipled us, and Mike Metzger, and Mike Matovich, and all these men, Kevin, they, they had a part in our lives, they poured their lives into us, and I, I'm so thankful now for my second pastor I've ever had in my life, Mark Brown. Mark is my pastor. You know, and I'm so thankful for him. I'm so thankful when he called and asked me if I would come and, and uh, play whatever position that he asked me to play. And I, I've tried, but you know what? He just loves me too much. He'd, he'd rather do it himself, and that's okay because he's a pack mule. But I love my pastor. I love him so much. And my wife and family, we love our pastor. He cares for us. Uh, some of the things that Atlanta said, his passion is tremendous. His passion to love people, even when they don't love him, is amazing to me. You know, the Bible, uh, Jesus said, you're to love your enemies. You know, and, you know, and we can't even love our brother. What, what's our problem? But I can honestly say this man loves his brother, his, this church. He loves you. He cares for you. We have a master teacher. His name is Jesus. The Holy Spirit of God, the Trinity of God, and how it was all put together and manifested and given to us in the Word of God. I'm so thankful that we have that Holy Spirit of God. And if you don't have that Holy Spirit of God in you, then a lot of times, with uh, every time when you're reading the Word, it may not make much sense to you. But once the Holy Spirit comes in and once you become born again, all of a sudden, he begins to teach you, and he is the master teacher. I'm so thankful that our pastor believes that, that Jesus is the head of this church. We understand that. That's what the Word of God says. He is the one that gets the preeminence in everything that we do and teach. Ephesians chapter 4 with me real quickly. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 1. Paul is writing there to the church. He says, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. I'm so thankful that God called. God called Mark Brown. I can remember, I, I don't know if he called him that night, but I remember years ago in the hotel down in Savannah, Georgia, Mark and I were doing a baseball clinic for Roe Porter, teaching the church how to use sports to minister the gospel. And 
We're sitting in the hotel room that night. We're praying. We're getting ready for the next day. And we were talking about the future. What, what do you believe God wants us to do? And, and Mark said to me, and, and I prayed about it and prayed about it after he said that and because I knew that was his heart's desire. He said, one day, I, I just, I want to pastor. I, I, want, I, want, I want to be a shepherd of people. I want to, because I love people and I want to pull my life into them. I want to teach them about Jesus. And I remember that conversation we had and we just began to pray. And I knew from that moment that this man was going to make a pastor. He's a pastor teacher. Because look what it says down in verse number 11. It says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some, notice, pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man into the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Being able to teach Jesus, teach his word, and so and be formed into that image that's pleasing and walking worthy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our master teacher. But I want you to notice there the pastor teacher. I want you to notice that it goes together in that phrase in verse number 11. I have traveled I've spoken in hundreds and hundreds of churches. I've, I've, I've been in uh, pastor's meetings and I've been to their churches. I've heard them preach and teach. And, and I'm convinced that most pastors that I know of are not teachers. They're evangelists. They stand in the pulpit and they evangelize. And they evangelize. They talk about evangelism. They're always giving the gospel. And I have nothing wrong with the gospel. That's what saved me. The power of God. Amen. But the pastor's job is also to be what? A teacher. He's supposed to take the word of God. He's supposed to teach us. In the Bible, there's three words for, that are mentioned in different areas of the Bible that have to do with the title of a pastor. I find one in 1 Timothy chapter 3 that mentions the bishop. It says for the bishop, you know, someone must desire that office of a Bishop. The word bishop means he's an overseer. Just kind of oversees the ministry. As, I, as Lana was talking about Brownie on the fence there and looking, he was just overseeing. But again, he wasn't really, you know, in a gaze. He's watching people. He's watching them minister to other people. So he's an overseer. In the book of Acts chapter 20, verse 17, Acts 20, verse 28, Paul mentions how he would go to place to place and he would ordain what? Elders. And these elders, these spiritual leaders in these churches that would teach and preach the word of God. So there's the elder, someone who is spiritual mature in the word of God and then of course here we find in Ephesians 5 or excuse me Ephesians 4 the pastor teacher the pastor is the word for shepherd he shepherds the flock and so what about this pastor teacher look up on the screen it says the word pastor teacher to teach to educate I, I don't think there's a place in this church especially where this man is speaking or others are speaking that you are not taught the word of God. The word of God is taught in this church. The word of God is preached in this church. The word of God is taught in the small groups. The word of God is taught in discipleship. The word of God is taught in faith place. The word of God is taught out on those fields when we're ministering. We have break time. The word of God is taught at youth camp. It's taught. We believe in the teaching and preaching of the word of God at First Bible Baptist Church. It's to instruct. I like the word to coach. To coach, to bring them along, to, to, to bring them to where they're, they're, they're playing the best that they can. And sometimes <laughs> when coaches or teachers want to, sometimes they're tough on you. You know, we have, we, you've, I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. We've seen it. You know, we, but you know what? Iron sharpens iron. I know I make you mad a lot. I understand that, okay, just because I'm the way I am, you know, 
And that's what amazes me about his love, that he would love somebody like me, okay? Knowing, again, the good, the bad, and the ugly, okay? Just loving because Christ loves. Notice it, to train, to enlighten, to guide, to show, to indoctrinate, to edify, to even discipline. Woo! And then the word to test. I believe our pastor is a teacher. He teaches the word of God. Our pastor is a shepherd. Our pastor is the bishop of First Bible Baptist Church. He's the overseer of this ministry. But we know that Jesus is the master teacher. We hear that from our pastor saying that. Jesus Christ is the bishop of our souls. He is the chief shepherd. Again, most pastors, I believe, are evangelists. But a true pastor has got to really love his people. And as a teacher, <laughs> you remember your teachers in school? You know, remember the old dreaded test when, you know, maybe you weren't prepared and they would have a pop quiz when you showed up, you know? I remember stepping into class, my very first class at North Star Bible Institute with Hal Roscoe is our missions pastor. And I get in there and I'm so excited. I'm going to learn the word of God. I'm, I'm pumped, man. And Hal goes, take out a piece of paper and close your Bibles. You're having a test. I raised my hand. I said, but Hal, we haven't learned anything yet. He said, I know. I want to find out what you know. Well, you know what I found out? I found out how much I didn't know. Because I made a zero, okay, on, on the test. It was pop quiz that day. And so, and so I had these tests, and I dreaded them. A church history, midterm, 250 fill in the blanks. And I walk in there, and I look at this thing, and my mind went blank. No film in the camera. You know, that you know, deer in that headlight look. You know, I go, oh, no, no way. So I just turned the test over, wrote Acts 4.13, said, Dear Professor, even Peter and John couldn't pass this test, and turned it in. And of course, I failed the test, and I had to repeat church history. He didn't laugh like you did. <laughs> test. We're given test. And the trying of our faith is so, so important. Stretching our faith. I'm so thankful that our pastor stretches our faith. I come in every Sunday to listen to his sermons and I bring some paper and I take notes. Why? Because I want to learn. I want to be stretched. I want to be edified. I want to be corrected. I want to be instructed. And I want to make sure that, that what he's saying goes along with what the Word of God is indeed saying. Hello? You know? George used to say to us, Pastor Grace, every man is my teacher. Every man. I can learn what to do. I can learn what not to do. He said, but learn to eat the chicken and throw away the bone. Just filter everything through the Word of God. And I'm thankful we have a pastor like that. Testing is always for our good. Always. James 1 tells us that, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, verse 3, that the trying, the testing of your faith worketh patience. Patience. Patience is needed. I, I don't like how you get it, though. You know, through tribulation cometh patience, right? So you got to go through some tough times sometimes to learn that patience. But testing is always for our good. You know what? The testing is our chance to be obedient to God. You know, when our pastor gets up and he preaches and he talks about a mission trip or he talks about the ministry out on our field, these are opportunities for us to be obedient to God in ministering the Word of God to our community and around the world. And he throws these tests and you go, man, I've never been on a foreign mission field. I've, I've never been to, you know, I don't know how to speak the language. Well, we'll have some interrupters for you, I'm sure. Oh, interpreters, I'm sorry. But remember, testing is our chance to be obedient to God and allow his character to be built in us. What did John say? He says, he must increase, right? And I must decrease. I've got to put Bobby 
on that cross and, and say, it's not my will, Lord, but thine be done. You know, when Mark and I signed with the Orioles many, many years ago, they gave us a handbook about that thick of every single play, every fundamental, every cutoff, every bunt play, pitchers where they cover, backup. I mean, you name it, it was in there, and it was called the Oriole Way. And so they gave us this thing because it had everything to do with the fundamentals in how to play the game and do it right. Our pastor stands in this pulpit and gives us the fundamentals of the faith the preaching and teaching of the Word of God. Now, what are we going to do with it? Are we going to walk out the door and just say, you know, I heard it, that was good, it tickled my ears, or am I going to be obedient? See, that's what testing is all about. And as a pastor, ch teacher, they test us, they, they, they coach us, they indoctrinate us, they, they want us to grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so again, it's so important. Testing is our chance to be obedient. Testing is designed to strengthen our commitment to obey. You know, we had a lot of people, Anna and Doc, and talked about the commitment of this man. I know he's committed. Oh man, even back when he played ball and the things that we went through and the practices we went through and all of those things, he was committed He's always been committed, but now that he has the Lord Jesus Christ, he's committed to the highest cause there is, and that's pleasing God. What are we going to do? Are we committed just to our own self, or are we committed to something higher than what we are? Committing to the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter what. No matter what. In everything, you know, my father-in-law used to say, and I say it all the time, there's two times to obey God, when you feel like it and when you don't. Two times to serve God, when you feel like it, when you don't. See, testing is always designed to strengthen our commitment because there hath no temptation taken, but such as is what? Common to man. But God is faithful <laughs> you know i got to thinking about my wife just going through surgery and how god orchestrated all that to give us the right doctor at the right place with the right set of circumstances and all the time we're worried about what are we going to do what are we going to do and yet god has a way of putting everything in place if we'll just trust him and put our hands up and say for your glory and not mine. No matter what, no matter what, because he with the temptations always going to make a way for us to escape. You know, testing is good. Testing is designed to prove our walk and our love for God. Do you love him? What did he tell Peter? Lovest thou me more than these? You Lord, you know I love you. Peter, let me ask you twice. Lovest thou me more than thee? You know I love you. Let me ask you the third time, Peter, just in case you didn't hear me the first two. Lovest thou me more than these? Lord, you know I love you. He says, guess what? Let me paraphrase John 21. Peter, when you were younger, you did what you wanted to do. You went where you wanted to go. You just had all this thing. This is my life, but now you're mine. And you're going to go places that you may not want to go. You're going to talk to people that you never thought you'd talk to. And guess what? You're even going to die for me. Woo! Do we understand that? Do we understand that true love of God? That God is testing us. He wants to prove our walk, to prove that we really love God. My favorite verse is found in the Bible, Deuteronomy 13. Here we go. Do you know what the word prove means? It means to put to a test, okay? It means to examine, to distinguish by testing. If God tested you, would it come forth that you love him? 
If God tested you right now, would it come forth that, well, I love myself a little bit more than I love God? I mean, think about that, that testing that comes. Do you ever wonder why our pastor calls upon some of us to come and help in the ministry? You know what the, the definition of that prove means? To find by experience. You know, when I showed up in Pastor Grace's office years ago, when I walked away from baseball and I went into his office, I just wanted to serve God. But I had stuff in my mind. I'm a retired ball player. Everybody knows who I am. And so when I showed up in, in George's office, he handed me a little bulletin and had all the needs of the church. But none of them said retired ball player turned preacher. I kept looking. It was all about serving. This man is served by experience, by years, by years, by years. I looked at George and I said, what's the bus ministry? I'm not a mechanic. I don't know how to work on buses. He says, you don't know what the bus ministry is? I said, no. He said, come and be faithful. So I came and drove a bus every week for the next four years, picked up little children, brought them to church so they could hear about Jesus. You see, God's testing us to prove our love to him. Look at Deuteronomy 13. Look at what it says. It says that if there arise a prophet or dream of dreams, and he giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and that sign or wonder come to pass, where if he spake unto thee, let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Look at verse 3. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God, what? He proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Whew. Testing is for our good. We have a, a pastor who proclaims the word of God and challenges us from week to week. Where are we? Are we teachable? Years ago, someone preached a message on the word F-A-T, fat. And he said, what God is looking for is fat. You know, all the fat is the Lord's. In the Old Testament, they would trim the fat off all the sacrifices and burn it as a sweet savor in the nostrils of God. And they took that F-A-T and made a little acronym out of it and talked about F being faithful. Our man's faithful. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful he's available, except when he texts Kevin. And I'm so thankful that he's teachable. We have to be teachable. We have to learn from the Word of God. And we learn through this testing. I thank God for my pastor. Thank God for Cheryl. Thank God for you guys. I thank God for First Bible Baptist Church. I'm so thankful. Mark, you brought me here almost 10 years ago. I'm, my tenure's coming up pretty quick, so, you know, I thank you. You didn't know what you were getting, or maybe you did, but, you know, I don't think you expected me to live this long, though. I think that's what it was. <laughs> but I've got a prayer warrior right there, so sorry. Amen. But thank you from me, from Becky. I love you. Now, folks, I don't know how much time we have, but we got a little slice of time to make an eternal difference in our community and around the world. And as God tests us, as God proves us, let's step out by faith and say, God, stretch me. Make me more like you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, again, thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord. I pray you have been honored. You have been glorified through the singing, through the giving, Lord, through the testimonies, Lord. Thank you for the pastors who came, took time to talk about our pastor. Lord, we have a good one, and I'm so thankful for that. God, I pray for Mark. I pray for Cheryl, the children. God, have your hand upon them, Lord. Blessings. God, help us as a church not to sin and not pray for our pastor. 
Lord, I'm so thankful for our staff. I'm so thankful for what you're doing in our lives. God, thank you for salvation. Thank you that you saved us. Thank you for what you placed us and where you placed us in this ministry. So God, right now, speak to our hearts, I pray. Lord, if there's anyone here that would just like to come and pray during as the music plays, just maybe pray for our pastor, maybe pray for our church, or maybe you're not saved and you say, Brother Bobby, would you pray with me? I will be glad to take a Bible and show you what it means to be truly, truly saved. So I'm going to be down here at the front as we close our prayer now. But if God spoke to your heart, would you come? Maybe just pray. Pray for again for our pastor, for what's going to happen very shortly. We've got another mission trip coming up. We've got the sports ministries going on. We have so much going on with the teachers who teach and preach the Word of God. So God, I just thank you so much.